there's one thing Breath of the Wild fans want, it's more Breath of the Wild. And Age of Calamity is here to give us, well, something kinda like that. Like the previous Hyrule Warriors games, this is Zelda as seen through a Dynasty Warriors lens. But the key difference here is that Age of Calamity's premise takes us back to the events referenced throughout Breath of the Wild. This is the story of the champions, of Zelda's struggle to awaken her power, and of the resurrection of Ganon. The resulting game is a great fit for Koei Tecmo's famous 1 vs 1000 gameplay, and also a fun new spin on a much loved world. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity really does feel like a love letter to Breath of the Wild. It goes out of its way to include as many of the signature elements of that game as it can. From the bestiary and Sheikah powers through to cooking, Koroks, clothing options, and of course, paragliding. Terrifying. All of that really sets the tone, but the developers don't stop there. Age of Calamity is packed with systems, mechanics, locations, and easter eggs pulled from the object of its affections, and coming across these in my more than 40 hours with it has been a joy. Of course Link can shield surf, and parry guardian lasers. And why shouldn't he wield tree branches, soup ladles, and mops? And why not cast Magnesis to yank treasure chests out of the ground? Use an Octorok to polish up rusty weapons? And what could be more normal than tuning the Sheikah sensor to find ingredients across the map? Age of Calamity is able to go even further in some areas too. There's a large cast of playable characters for one, letting you get a sense for how deadly Impa was as a young woman, or how skilled the champions were in battle. It's over. We even get to pilot the Divine Beasts, and while these missions aren't actually all that exciting, they're still a good palate cleanser, as well as an effective way to bring Breath of the Wild's backstory to life, and to make these lumbering titans feel more real than they ever did before. Perhaps the most significant new twist, however, is also likely to be the most divisive. The opening cutscene introduces us to a miniature guardian who comes alive at the moment Zelda's powers awaken when all hope is lost, and then travels back in time to warn the heroes about what is to come. Now, the guardian itself is cute, don't get me wrong, but the time travelling motif naturally raises the question of whether this prequel will follow the events as described in Breath of the Wild, or whether it'll create its own timeline. I'm not going to directly answer that question here, as the story should be yours to discover, but what I will say is that while many events transpire and there's plenty of high stakes drama, the actual characterization along the way is pretty lacking. Unlike Breath of the Wild, Age of Calamity is able to tell a traditional linear story, it still doesn't really give us any meaningful insight into its characters. Whatever could you be, little one? To be fair, Age of Calamity is not trying to be a Final Fantasy game. Big events in this story are often delivered through narrated text on screen, with somewhat questionable voice acting. To stop Calamity Ganon, it was crucial that they possess the sword that seals the darkness. While the cutscenes are largely just brief interludes that help keep the story going or show off something cool, the primary purpose of the time-bending story really is to provide a backbone for ever-evolving gameplay across the length of Age of Calamity, and in this capacity it serves its purpose admirably. While I'd have liked a little more insight into the core characters, the rock roast of this game really is its combat. Every character has an array of different combos based around regular attacks transitioning into strong attacks, as well as a unique central mechanic. Impa, for instance, places symbols on enemies which she can then absorb with strong attacks to create mirror images of herself. Absorb three symbols and she's at full power and has a line of clones fighting to either side of her. Impa can feel absurdly powerful in this state, spraying a barrage of blades at anyone in even the vaguest of vicinities. This feeling of power only grows as you upgrade her weapons and start to take advantage of weapon augmenting seals that suit her playstyle. This short sword, for instance, is focused on range, speed, and charging Impa's special attack. It's time. Every character is this distinct. Obosa wields lightning as a weapon. Mifa uses fountains to close gaps and launch enemies into the air, and Zelda wields the Sheikah Slate. I'd love to also tell you about some of the insane characters you'll unlock further in, but that would be spoiler territory, so instead I'll just say, whoa. Watch and learn. Age of Calamity has some awesome surprises and some truly deep cuts that fans are really going to love. They don't all land. Some characters are more intuitive to use and more robust in design than others, but still, the overall roster is a lot of fun. Coming back to what we can show, meow. Link is perhaps the most traditional character, but he also offers up the most variety, boasting different combos, special attacks, and bespoke mechanics based on the weapon type he's using, whether it be sword and shield, spear, or two-handed weapon. 
Sword and Shield, for instance, opens up parrying, shield surfing, and a rapid fire bow. Whereas two handed weapons let him sacrifice some of his own health to juice up attacks. He's a powerhouse. Of course, these are just a few of the ingredients going into this mighty combat stew. Every playable character can also use four Sheikah runes Stasis, Cryonis, Magnesis, and Remote Bombs, with a unique implementation for each character. That's the way. Link launches off his Cryonis block, for instance, while Impa rides hers around like some kind of ultra compact ice car. It's fun seeing how each has been realized in game. I wonder. The role of runes in combat is less freewheeling than you might expect it to be, however, as each boss, including area bosses, clearly signposts when to use a particular rune against them. This actually discouraged me from experimenting with my runes more during these fights, as I didn't want to get caught out needing a specific counter while the ability recharged. The action has a real sense of speed, and being able to lock onto larger enemies, then dodge away from their attacks is a big part of that, letting you dance around them with confidence. And best of all, dodge at the right time and you'll trigger a flurry rush, giving you an opening to take a big chunk off the opponent's weak point gauge. Many of the most thrilling missions double down on the fast paced combat by putting you on the clock. There's a real sense of urgency when you know you need to capture a certain number of outposts or take down a certain set of powerful enemies within a time limit. In these missions, you're not bothering with the cannon fodder or scouring the corners of the map for Koroks or treasure chests. Instead, you're beelining for your objective, entirely focused on dodging attacks and finding ways to whittle down those weak point gauges. Often, you're also dispatching AI-controlled allies to other key points on the map so you can switch directly from one objective to another. Combat can be a little rough around the edges, however. The camera isn't always helpful and sometimes loses the action completely. And while Age of Calamity generally feels fast and responsive, the frame rate can vary a bit, and this is even more noticeable in split-screen co-op, where the game's gorgeous visual style also takes a significant hit. It's a real shame Koei Tecmo didn't allow for online co-op. Playing solo though, Age of Calamity really does offer a wealth of content. At no point did I hit a wall, instead I always felt like I was making progress and was always having fun. And even now, with the main story complete, my journey still isn't over because there's so much left to do. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity offers a welcome trip back to a world I've clocked hundreds of hours in, set in a time we've only heard discussed in hushed tones. Its hugely varied roster of characters, solid combat mechanics, fun progression and clever adaptation of Breath of the Wild's vision of Hyrule is a joy to play and discover. While there are some mischaracterization opportunities, Age of Calamity remains a blast from start to finish. For more Hyrule action, check out 6 Reasons Why Breath of the Wild is still riveting in 2020, and watch our guide on how to bomb impact launch yourself across the map. And for everything else, stick with IGN.